uh, talking about actors who've been in everything and to just change the tone ever so slightly i'd rather do, uh, do this now than later the the doctor who community we've sort of lost one of our own this week i don't know if you've noticed this 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 gentleman and i'm talking of uh, i'm talking of harry fielder here now harry's just passed away at the age mm. of the age of 80 passed away on the 6th of february and he's an english actor and supporting supporting artist i think that's the uh, that's yep. how it's described now on extra as they used to say and uh, he has worked extensively in british tv and movies from the 1960s right the way through certainly into the, into the 80s and maybe into the into the 90s too he was a death star trooper in the first star wars movie but for the purposes of our conversation this guy appeared in over a dozen Doctor Who stories between 1967 and 1982. He was also a stalwart of the ITC stable of mm. filmed cult TV shows too. So yeah, Harry Harry Fielder, a, a great character, staple of the convention circuit too. He was a, a big Facebook user over the last five to ten years. He was a member of several Facebook groups, I remember. And yeah, always happy to talk about his time in film and TV, and particularly in Doctor Who, everybody. Here are some of his appearances. Very sad news. Any memories of, of Harry, everybody, when you sort of clicked that it was the same guy watching these stories? I don't think I ever clicked, I have to be no, honest. I, same I, here. I never, it never, it never, I, what, what's that bottom middle photo? I don't even recognise what that one's from. The black costume. What's that? Is that the, it's not the Seeds of Doom. Yes, Seeds of Doom. Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah. One of Harris Chase's guys, he, he continually sort of bullies people around there. And uh, we've got, <laughs> yes, several people. Oh, hi. Yes, uh, by the way, the Tardis Blue comment is from Jackson Parish. Uh, yes, I know. Jackson, of course. Yeah, it's good to see pictures. Hi, soon. Jackson. After I top of my vivid colour, it will happen. Definitely it's lovely photos. to speak to you at last. We've, Jackson, I've been speaking for years, haven't we? I've, I've never actually, I don't think she's heard my voice before. Uh, the space book. What's, yes, yeah, so Harry here. Yeah, yes. obviously, this, this guy was in them all. He was in The Professionals. He was in The Saint. He was in Randall and Hopkirk Deceased, The Champions. You name wow. it. Wow. This level of uh, supporting artists is, is seen it all. And the movies, too, you know, se several of the biggest films of the 70s mm -hmm. and the 80s. This guy had got a filmography that anybody would envy, but he really enjoyed what he did. And I don't think he was, he wasn't snobbish about his status either. He liked being a, a supporting artist. He liked the fact that he'd been on screen with yeah. all these all these legends. And RIP, much respect to Harry Fielder. Yes, yeah, so I was quite, I was, I was sad to see that he'd left us because this is a name that I've seen turn up time and time again, you know, largely on social media and things. I know he's got a following. I know people really loved him and would, and would get, he would sign practically anything. That, you know, <laughs> and for free. He wouldn't charge you for anything at all. He was old school. In the old days, in the old days, it's always good to be old school. Always, uh, it, yes. He, I suspect, he had several hair colours in his many roles as well. Simon, speaking. <laughs> of, uh, so yeah, rest in peace, Harry. I, I was really sorry to hear that, but he did. Again, he lived a very, very full, happy life. He had a great career, a long, happy marriage. So yeah, we salute you there, Harry. With people, yes, you, the imaginations of people in the chat are going through the through the roof here. We, wow. <laughs> we have P.D. Rich who says, if Timon turns up with breast implants and starts criticising the fan community, it's gone very, very wrong. <laughs> Another kind of, I don't know what he means, know what he means yeah. about that. A comic talk with Pops <laughs> fans and fans. <laughs> You are live in the madness. Hello, madness. <laughs> I'm not quite sure that what that means, but is it going to hurt, Pops? Is it going to hurt? You it's a great band. We love madness. Yeah. So, yes, if you are watching over in the madness, please like this video and subscribe. Come and subscribe to the channel. Watch us in the madness again, by all means. Thank you for that, Pops. Hi, guys, from, uh, from TARDIS time. My, uh, I, you know, I like to talk about the uh, the audio dramas, the world of Doctor Who, the expanding worlds of Doctor Who, and I know that not all of you, in fact, a lot of you aren't as keen on the audio dramas as I am, are you? you you're very no. reluctant, and you, or you, <laughs> you know, Simon Cherry picks, you know, you've left, sort of left them behind. JT, you're not on board with it, but I've noticed there are, there are lots of new audio books that have been announced over the last few weeks, uh, and why I wanted to bring this to your attention, Simon. It's because <laughs> this this one is direct from your favourite season, your favourite era. It's sort of what happened next. Wow. It's a, a sequel to Warriors Gate and oh. by Stephen Gallagher himself. By Stephen Gallagher, you've got my attention. 
Yeah. Seriously. And it's part, part of a new line that they're doing over on, but this is BBC audio, not Big Finish. Who, with, is uh, by, who is it read by, Dan? Can't see read by Stephen Pacey. That's, Steve. funny, that's Steve. the funny thing. It's not read by Lala Ward. I was expecting it to be read by Lala Ward. It's just Stephen Pacey. Pacey. He played Pacey. Tarrant. He played Tarrant on Blake Seven. Back oh, he does a lot of the audio books, Simon. He reads a lot oh, of the okay. Yeah. Yeah, and did, so this is BBC. Nothing to do with Big Finish. Nothing to do with Big Finish at all. But it's part of a new line that they've got coming out called Beyond Beyond the Doctor. The Doctor. And yeah, uh, Lala Wars Romana there. So I would imagine she's still stuck in E space. That's what I'm picking up from the graphic there, with the bright light coming through the the stony yeah. window. Yeah, it's but, very warrior's gate, isn't it? That I mean, it, it's the, this kind of stuff is far more interesting to me than the latest one written by Nick Briggs. Uh, sorry, but you know, sorry, call Nick. me a heathen. Call me a heathen. But I'm far more interested in Stephen Gallagher has got to say um, because you know this is. You're right, Dan. This is kind of classic stuff. This is, and so I'm, I'm, I'm much more interested in and, and the stuff that was written by Andrew Smith. I know he's done some of uh, some, some for Big Finish, um, and uh, David Fisher, of course, famously did the uh, the Stones of Blood, rewrote the Stones of Blood, and that's a brilliant, brilliant audio book. Um, so that kind of stuff is far more interesting to me personally. And so this, absolutely, yep, yeah, you're spot on, Dan. This has got my, I, I knew nothing about this, um, and this has really got my attention. And so, yep, yeah, I want to hear this. Well, you know what this reminds me of? Uh, and it's a shame they called it Beyond the Doctor because they could have tied it in with their new novel range because this reminds me of the Companions of Doctor Who target range. Oh, yeah. Of which there were only three. Yeah, you're right. There were only three. There was uh, Tullo and the Earthlink Dilemma. Canine. Canine and Company. And, and there Ford. was Harry, Harry Sullivan's War. So this reminds me of that sort of stuff. And it's a shame that they went with this. New, they could have done a, a whole target um, sequel the new the companions of i Excellent. mean it depends who you want to do because i don't know if you've got it down but the one that nearly made me wet myself was the one about bessie yes it's funny you should say that i have got, i you mean you mean this don't you yes I'm i've got that. It again. For God's <laughs> sakes. Now, why now, again again here we are in a situation oh, where the previous, obviously, the previous story written by Stephen Gallagher. Stephen Gallagher has written lots and lots of books and other TV shows. He's a hard sci-fi author, very, yeah. very respected. Oh, yeah. So a sci-fi yeah. story by him back in the Doctor Who universe and picking up from where he's gone before. I'm not surprised you're interested in that, Simon. Absolutely. But as JT's just said, when I saw this listed, this is by Paul Mars, who now Paul Mars is a fun writer. So if yeah. anybody can give voice, I suppose, to Bessie, it's yeah. probably it's probably him. <laughs> but I can't help but think, why? Why? <laughs> look at him, he's so funny. Just uh, but look, at, look who's look who's playing her. Look who's playing her though. The, the legendary Stephanie Cole. It's, I it's mean, what a cool Stephanie Cole, isn't it? Let's be honest. Oh, I hope she has a laugh. Thomas the Tank Engine or something. What's going on? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I haven't, Why? I haven't got the blurb for the story itself yet. You uh, don't say. Paul Mars has written a lot of Big Finish, and he's written, he was behind the Hornet's Nest series that Tom Baker starred in before. Oh, yes, he made his right. way to Big Finish. So fun, no, quirky no, stories. Really it may not be as awful as it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> I don't it see how it can't be. It's <laughs> awful. Maybe That's what we said about awful. Turlo and the Earthlink Dilemma. <laughs> I like Turlo and the Earthlink Dilemma. You just shut up, Jay. I thought I was like that. I found that. I love I found that. One that of my book. favorite books. As a child, I as a child, I found it unreadable. But I think that if they were to yeah. do that, if they were to do that as a talking book now with Mark Strickson, I mm. may, I may enjoy it. <gasps> Matt, I agree. That's, a, with that's actually a very good point, though, Dan. Uh, with Simon, you saying that, I I struggled with it as a sixteen-year-old, fifteen, sixteen-year-old, whatever it was. I might go back to it. Okay. Yeah, I, I love it now. I, I loved it at the time and love it now. Uh, yeah, so Matt, sorry, Matt. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, 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 yeah, we, we agree on Nick Briggs. And I'm sorry, Nick Briggs is a lovely bloke. But please, can I make very, very clear here? Nick Briggs is a lovely bloke and he does the Dalek voices really, really well. And he writes probably really well as well. But just keep probably. You know, <laughs> <laughs> just give somebody else a chance you know you know it doesn't all have to be written and directed and starring nick briggs that's all i'm saying so who let's go to this comment here from matt pot just for people out there who don't know because she's ah. british matt Co matt uh, pot here is asking who is stephanie cole again yes. she's never strangely never been in doctor who that i can remember no, no stephanie cole is a, a very uh prolific 
British character actress, isn't she? Yes. Right. Yes, so it is. You may know her if you have watched Lou Jameson in the 70s and early 80s did a series called Tenko. Uh, yeah. Stephanie Cole stars alongside her in a couple of series of that playing B. Yeah. And and the other very th very famous thing, of course, that she did was Open All Hours, uh, in which she was Mrs. Featherstone Hoff in The, the, right. the, the Widow All in Black. And she's priceless in that. Yeah. So so check out Open All Hours and you'll see Stephanie Cole. And I caught her in something the other day on some on some TV channel, on a, on a 90s thing that I never saw because I was too busy clubbing in the 90s, so I don't really remember it. Uh, and it was some sort of comedy thing that she's done, yeah. Waiting for God or something? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. That's oh, oh so you only live. Yeah. Once, Ian, was that the one that was set in the old people's home? Yeah, the old people's so. home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something. yeah. yeah. We have it's just, it's just uh, good in that. another comment here. I think this is from good in everything. That's the best old school Doctor Who ever. I think she's talking about Warriors Gate. Mine is either Castrovalva or better still, Enlightenment. I remember you like Enlightenment. What's yours? What's what's your best old school Doctor Who story, Simon? <sighs> oh, you're having a laugh. How long have you got? Oh, we have uh, to come back to you on that next it time. It changes. It literally changes every day, from <laughs> Tanzu and Chiang to the Deadly Assassin to the Robots of Death to Earthshock to Androzani to Enlightenment to Revelation of the Daleks. You know, take your pick. It's Robots Bernard. of Death. Robots of Death. They don't come much better. Another one. That's yours. Brilliant. That's yours, Ian. That's JT. Mine. What's yours? Um, I I can't. I I can't. Oh no. Pass, can't, can't do that. Just a question, simply. I'm gonna. I, that, that means the whole world's gonna stop. Do you know what I mean? Let me, let me explain to people why I'm laughing so much about this. Because yeah, coming up soon, we had the bright idea to have an entire week, an entire show called "Ask Us Anything," where potentially the people out there, all you lovely people who watch regularly, week by week, in the chat, can can uh, send us direct questions, which we will answer on screen like like that one and we'll try and answer them as directly as we can but if that's a pilot for that idea it's not going too well <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, if you're asking though to choose between as, as, as any of the stories in a 26 year period oh it's really difficult when you put on the spot isn't it do you know I what mean, i mean i did i might go for robots of death as well with ian it, it's, I love yeah it's classic death. though isn't it that's a beautiful oh, yeah. one everything everything yeah. works well in robots doesn't that's... it just absolutely stunning yeah, really gorgeous one. Yeah, people, although, people, although I watched um easier. sorry, I watched the uh, the John Pertweed one. I keep forgetting the name, the one with the dinosaurs recently. Oh, I Indeed. watched that last nice. week. You know what? It isn't that bad. I remember it's watching great. it thinking it was rubbish. Yeah, it's, it's a great stuff. story. And and it's got <laughs> it this is. lovely thing for Mike Yates in it as well. Yeah. You know, this lovely arc thing that's yeah. coming in for him. It's a it's a great story. It's yeah. brilliant. It's only the effects that let it down. Yeah. It's Absolutely. brilliant. It makes me laugh when um John Pertweed and uh and uh, uh Mary uh, oh, just calling Liz. Mary Jane now. Liz was waiting for the bus. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's classic though, isn't it? That is yeah, a great, is. great story. It really it is, is a good story. It is. And do you know what? what? Um, that... Dan, what about you? Let's put you on the spot. What's your? Oh, yeah. It's pointless. Actually, you know, you know what? Ah. In, in <laughs> enlightenment, enlightenment would be in for a sh with a shouting with a, a shouting mm -hmm. chat. But I think that I think that today. It's snake dance. It's snake dance today. Oh, oh, no. No. Dance. Always, 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 yeah. always, always go back to Peter Davison when I think of, of my favourite stories. People oh, are, yeah, people are on board with these companion books. Christian in the in the chat, he says, "Why not a series that explains what happened to Turlo?" Oh no, no! Yes, 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 yes. With Mark Strickson, bring it on. So that needs a series of books. In are this you respect, rather? Oh, Series. Are you telling me Big Fanish haven't done that already? <laughs> Is that no, what you're they saying? Will. Yeah. They will. I, no, I, I, I totally agree. That. I'm with JT, right? Big Finish is doing too much. It re they, really, they should stop oh, now. They should stop. Totally. Seriously. I think That's they the need problem. to. I think they need to look at their output when not yeah. just because people cannot afford to keep up, but I honestly think they've sort of flooded the marketplace, saturated it so much. And yeah. I love Big Finish, Kenny. If you're watching, you know I love Big Finish. But you can you can flood this marketplace too much. And people have only got so many not not just so much money, but they've only got yeah. so many hours in the average week to listen to this stuff. I think PD, I think PD Rich has got the best comment so far. Everybody, check this out. His idea yep. for a spin-off series or spin-off book: Adric and the Big Bang. Yeah. <laughs> yours, isn't it? Sure. I, trick. I may have seen that sort of video somewhere before. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. I, think, I, think the best, 
I think we best move on, everybody. I think we best move on. But yeah, keep watching when we know more about these books. We'll, we'll I certainly look. know someone that could actually confirm that, but we won't go into that. <laughs> doesn't it doesn't become special if you're flooding the market with, with lots agree. of stuff, does it? You know what and, I mean? So and this is why this is why okay, you know, I've, I've made a bit of fun of Big Finish here, but some of the stuff I've listened to by Big Finish is really good, but some of it is really not very good, and yeah. it's, and they need to be more selective and just you know just do Calm just down. Put stuff out, guys. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. I agree. I agree. <laughs> uh, talking yeah, about we are the, then. That's that sorted. That's <laughs> <laughs> a heated <laughs> debate. Another thing that I think people should be a bit more selective with too as well, and this includes Big Finish, is that where they spread this character. Because if you remember last year, Sophie Aldred put out a book. She yes. wrote a book uh, about Ace, about Ace's life, funnily enough, after she left the Doctor. Mm. And uh, it did quite well. I think it's, it was in hardback. I think it's just come into paperback. It's called mm -hmm. Child Childhood's End. I've not read it myself. I'll probably pick it up at some point, either the audio book or the book. But they've announced this week that uh, Alex Kingston is now writing a River Song. Oh, oh, this, is, this is a uh, again. This is a, this is a book. It's coming out on the twentieth of May, twenty twenty one, and it's up for pre order at sixteen ninety nine. And it says uh, it's nineteen nineteen thirty nine, New York, and the private eye Melody Malone is hired to find a stolen stolen ruby, the Eye of Horus. The ruby might hold the secret to the location of Cleopatra's tomb, uh, but everybody who comes into contact with it dies. Can Melody escape the ruby's curse? Again, I feel like I've heard this story kind of before as well, and I, I don't know about more River Song, but yeah, that's... <laughs> Wake up, JT. <laughs> this character... Yeah. I don't like her. I liked I her when don't. she first appearing, appeared, but then when she kept appearing, I just thought, no, leave. Just And also, another thing, is, am I the only one that thought it was very creepy? Because she looked like Matt Smith's mum when she kissed him. I was like, oh, it, just, it doesn't work. It doesn't oh, well. work. A lot of guys anyway. like an older woman. I like an older woman, like a younger man. It wasn't anything like that that got me. It was just the over roofs. And we talked about that the other week as well, didn't we? So uh, go back and watch all the shows that are on on, on the channel, everybody. Go, go and uh, love them. But yeah, just overuse, 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 overuse. overuse. Absolutely. You're right, JT. It, it, it was an idea that lasted for about five minutes, I would say. And by the end of the first story she was in, she was beginning to drive me berserk. Yeah. So I certainly didn't want to see her back. And I'm sorry, I, really, I can live without a book written by Alex Kingston. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think sorry, there is a problem. They just keep on. It is just a, it's overuse of everything. It's just the problem is now Doctor Who undoubtedly has become a, 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 a license to print money. And so it is just just keep churning. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what the quality is. Just keep churning. Well, it out. Just keep putting I'll tell you what's I'll tell you here. what's interesting about this thing as an actor. Right. You could play one role and suddenly you're out of favor. Like, for instance, when Alex Kingston was an ER, I really liked her in ER. I thought she was a really good, great actress. Suddenly she becomes River Song and I like Liked her when she first appeared then she kept appearing now i don't like her when i see a film uh, with her in it i just don't want to see it because that's familiarity isn't my it? idea yeah yeah you know they should really be yeah, careful who they play really that's the other funny. idea there simon is that the, the possibility could be her as well as as we've touched on before is that they're going back to older characters to mm. make the money yeah because the new ones are not making anything and we know that, uh, well, that is, you know yeah, yeah so it could that. be that i mean you know I mean, that's what I, you know. I'm probably I'm possibly very wrong, but that's one of the things I think about these um, beyond the doctor roles. You just know there's going to be one with the lovely, gorgeous Katie Manning coming through, yeah. and and quite right too. You know, I, I would see Lou Jameson jumping on board to do one about Sadie Miller. Sadie Miller will probably write one for Sarah Jane. Like, yeah, maybe even Jan will get one. Janet Fielding might get mm. a chance because she never got the book that they were going to do about Tegan. Yeah. yeah. Imagine if Chris Boucher wrote a book about Leela. The book oh, ending, love that. Looking in the face of evil. You know, oh, that would have been a prequel. Imagine, would, imagine a prequel. In a toss-up between a book by Alex Kingston and one by Chris Boucher. Mm, do you know, it's tough. Uh, do you know oh. I've got an idea for, you know, what's the next anniversary for Doctor Who? The next one 60. coming up? 60th. 60th. Maybe they should do a little YouTube thing with just the, com the, the companions that make sense. Like, for instance, Ace, yeah. you know, um, Katie yeah. Manning. Do you know what I mean? And do a little, small little thing, you know, do with you know, them Ian, in it. Yeah. That's very interesting you said that because I saw that on a, a Facebook page uh, during this past week where a fan has suggested something similar to say, look, 
we've got so much of a division now. The show's yeah. not working. The current incumbent is unpopular. Maybe they should celebrate the 60th anniversary by bringing all the existing companions together this time yeah. rather than the Doctor. And I thought, there's a spin I haven't thought yeah. of before. What an idea. Yeah. It Good might work. Would it work with the public? I'm not sure. But if you're doing it something like on YouTube or it's for a DVD release for us fans, it would work. Yeah, it would. It would. And... <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, mate. No, I was Sorry. just going to say, I think it would work with the public as long as as long as you brought back enough recognisable companions. Yeah, I think it would work with the public. I think it has to work with the companions that make sense to be in it. Do you know what yes. I mean? You can't just yeah. throw people in it that, that look, you know, I don't know. You, you, it has to make sense within the world that they're going to create for yes. them. You know what I mean? So... Yeah. It's but an yeah, interesting I mean, story idea, though, Ian, isn't it? I yeah. think, I think yeah. it could be onto something there. And if the BBC do that, you heard it here first. <laughs> yeah okay, um, it's, 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 it's something they should do and and i've said right and i and i will stick with this it's a shame that they didn't do that with paul mcgann they didn't do a 45 minute version of paul mcgann before the 50th they should have done that goddamn bbc but you know yeah. lost yeah never yeah mind. it is isn't it yeah you could be right late now. talking about the general public hooray we were not the great british <laughs> public <laughs> we are Simon so, so was a moment ago. So yeah, talk, th talking about the British public, we are a still five, six weeks into rumour season on the identity, the fate of the yeah. present doctor and the identity on who may be next. Now, we always, every week, have to pull one of these out of the pack. This is the name. Have to. Have, this is the name. <laughs> that, <laughs> this is the name that I'm seeing more than ever. This Go particular. In. This particular week, you ready? You braced for this one to go I right, to go right, to go right up the nose of Gillian Anderson. Uh, apparently, um, is somebody they really wants to be the Doctor. She's a name that I keep reading. Here she is with another, another. She's the one on the right or the left. Gillian Anderson. Yes, she's the. Of course, she's the. That's when she was filming the Crown. Yeah. yeah. This is. Yeah. This is uh, yes. Yeah, so this is X Files legend Gillian Anderson. She's fifty-two years of uh, years of age. Obviously, she had a major, major role in that show. It's hugely popular uh, character. She's still identified with, but ever since you know, she's done things like The Four, uh, Sex gorgeous. Education, The Crown. Here, American Gods. This woman's career just keeps going up and up and up and up. Now she's uh, real. <laughs> so character real character actress you never really know what part which kind of role she's going to take next who would have ever picked Gillian anderson to play margaret thatcher here with olivia, olivia coleman who's also a name that still comes up even though she turned the doctor down back in 2017 allegedly allegedly her name comes up a lot too but i just thought this was quite fun and yeah just to acknowledge to acknowledge the fact that Gillian's name does come up a lot and you know my feeling about it. Yes, the Doctor is a she, male role. But if I was to look at women, Ian, you know, she is gorgeous. Yeah, she is talented. She she's, is charismatic. She's got her feet under the, under the table with, when it comes to the BBC. The BBC okay. like hiring her a lot. She's been in a lot of BBC stuff. And also she's been in a lot of Netflix stuff as well. I think two, mm. in fact. So she has got the pedig ped pedigree. Pedigree. <laughs> that word. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, I'm with Simon really the doctor should be a man but yeah. i think what should happen in the last episode is that jody changes and then it cuts to black and we don't see who she changed to yeah so I, that's the possibility yeah. i mean also yeah. to be fair Gillian anderson she's okay but she's not as good as jody whittaker is she i mean <laughs> <laughs> i tell you something, um, Gillian Anderson is great in that. It's interesting what Vanessa's saying there. There's gossip there, everybody. Um, mm. uh, um, it's, she's great in Netflix's um, Sex Education. What a yes. hilarious show yeah, that she is. is. Yeah, she is. She is. She's great she's, in that. She, she's, a, she's an all-rounder and she's like, she's gorgeous. You know, I mean, I've seen pictures of her um, lately. Uh, that, I mean, she's in her 50s now and she still freaking does it for me. Do you know what I mean? Really? Still does it. <laughs> we'll move on. We'll move on. Why would, why would she... Would, would... Cold show for the mega geek. Cold show. For the <laughs> I want to know what this is that she doesn't treat her fans very well. What's that? What I know about? that is. Oh, that is. Know. Vanessa, give us some more gossip on that one. Yeah, should we? Yeah. Should we, should we yeah, no, I don't know. Yeah, but but like, why one. would she, Why would the stellar career she's had, why would she suddenly want to go and the work Doctor Who, yeah. Doctor Who? Yeah, you're right. Okay, well, uh, Vanessa, does, Vanessa does add here... Uh, <laughs> Allegedly, of course, she once told a story about an enthusiastic fan at a convention and she mocked them. See, now I've seen her talk about fans with affection, particularly X Files fans. So, but obviously, you know, people have their own. Have we all done that though? We do that every week. He's got a point. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Go for it. Attack. Attack of the Slovene. Somebody slap him. Slap which one of us? Which one of us needs a slap? Which one? There you go. All, all of us. Yeah. I took it for I took it for the team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Should we look at should we look at a couple of pretty pictures? Should we look at a couple right. of pretty pictures, everybody? Yes, I have found yeah, this this is uh full credit to Ollie Mally, uh... sorry, Mally or now this oh. uh, this pr uh, publicity picture of mm. John Pertwee from the Sea Devils is one that I think we've all seen time and time again, but always in black and white. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mally, Mally here has colorized that photograph and done a fantastic job. So here's the third doctor brandishing his trusty Sonic, Sonic, sorry, in in those leather gloves, about to uh, well, he's about to set off some mines, isn't he? As I remember in the story, yeah, 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 setting off mines. What a That's great so costume! Clear. What so a great clear, costume! Wow. It is, it is love that costume. costume that. It's so love, simple. I love it. It's yeah. Um, he went through different kinds of costumes, but I think this one's my favourite because. It's all you know. He just, I love John Pertwee. John Pertwee is one of my favourite doctors. Is there no I, nonsense I agree, doctor? Ian. I mean, yeah. I, I grew up with Tom Baker. Um, I grew but, up with him, but but I started with John Pertwee. My earliest yeah. memories of John Pertwee, um, and and I just loved the guy, and I still love him. And it still bothers me a little bit. I always feel of all of the doctors, he's he's somewhat underrepresented. He's somewhat forgotten. I always feel yeah. those early doctors. I don't know why. He just seems to get just. Uh, he was the he was the kick ass doctor because he used to beat people up in the episodes. I remember mm -hmm. he used to do that. What is it? Not the Karate, Newsian Aikido. Was, uh, that's it. That's the one. Yeah, uh, and he was brilliant at it. And and also, um, I, I just I just love John Pertwee because he is so different from the other doctors. Yeah, he's so different. I mean, if you if you pile them all up, right, he would stick out like a sore thumb. This guy because he was nothing like the rest of them. You know what I mean? So, I love John Pertwee. He's such I a agree. brilliant doctor. The uh, the picture that we're looking at here with these with that famous okay. bouffant blowing in the breeze there, <laughs> steely steely look on the straight arm of the yeah. third doctor. It's absolutely magical. That is a that's a classic look for the character, I think. And you know, I don't know. I, I took a long time to latch on to the third doctor, or to not to latch on, but I took a long time to appreciate the third doctor. I really do now. And every time I hear people speak about how much he meant to them as, as a child, because obviously this does, this he is, uh, I'm, too, I'm too young. <laughs> so I am oh. too young. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, Vanessa, so I'm watching Pertwee right now on oh, my very good. Watch. That's very Vanessa. Good. Love oh, Pertwee. What are you up to, Vanessa? We need to know which story you're up to. Yeah. Let's Daniel agrees, yeah. Or your ass. Ah, uh, yeah, Disaster Area makes a, a valid comment here. The uh, Pertwee is the Bond doctor. Well, they say they say that, but the Avengers and Bond at the time was that. And I, I kind of agree. I kind of yeah. but you know what stuck out with me is when in the five doctors when they all um got together at the ending to read that thing and the thing. And <laughs> you know, John Pertwee to me, he stuck out, he stuck out. You know, I mean the first doctor, he wasn't the original first doctor, and then you had, you know, Patrick Chowton, but it was John Pertwee, man. He was the man, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yes, yeah, but but imagine if if Tom had been there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, Tom those, wasn't those, there. <laughs> those two huge talents there. Yeah, I, know. Been, I, would, ooh, I know. I know. The moment, I know. the moment, the moment that I like. Is when he's chatting to the brigadier and Sarah Chan, oh, yeah. I think. Yes. And he's there chit chatting like that. And he says, Excuse, will you just excuse me a minute, oh, uh, dear boy? Because they're yeah. about to transcribe that and I think they're going to get it all wrong. They're without wrong me. without <laughs> me. Yeah. <laughs> but he, he looked a lot older then. His hair was, his hair, even though his hair was blonde originally, it was very grey in, in that episode. But he yeah. still was a powerhouse. You could, yeah. I, yeah. I'd go on about John forever. He's fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, John, John lived and breathed the Doctor. I mean, he'd turn up yeah. to open supermarkets as the Doctor. He would come to the conventions in his costume as the Doctor. Yeah. Um, he just, I, he, he was I, just I think, lived it. I, I, I think the thing, I don't think he ever turned up to a Doctor Who convention without his costume on. Right, right. he was still wearing his costume all the way through. He was always very proud of his Doctor Who heritage. Yeah. Um, and, and, and in a way, it's such a sad story that, that, that the only reason he sort of left was because he just wanted a bit more money and they said no. Um, and that, and that was that. That was and yeah. we, okay. We wouldn't have had Tom Baker with that, so it's sliding doors. It doesn't really yeah. matter. But but nonetheless, I still think it's a shame that they didn't recognise what they got in John at the time um, in, in seventy three, seventy four, when he was leaving. Yeah, great actor. Great. He's actor. a great doc. He's a great actor, great person, and a great doctor.
as far yeah. as I'm concerned. So, and, a, and a tough, a tough act to follow. And yeah, these, the, this, I saw this. The uh, Big Chief Studios. There, uh, you can't call them. The, are they the dolls, statuettes? What would you call statuettes? Them? Don't they? That's statuettes. Right. They've got stitched, stitched clothes and things like that, which you don't normally get with statuettes, do you? So I'm not no, quite sure the word. But yeah, uh, DSB in the in the chat in the comments section says hi, folks. Big, Big Chief Studios, Third Doctor will come out possibly if all goes well at the end of March. It's a damn good likeness. Yeah, I mean, they some of their likenesses are astonishing, and that one is particularly good. I know they yeah. they were supposed to put that out a few months ago, but obviously, obviously with the uh, with the pandemic going on like everything else has been affected by that so yeah if you have if you have pre-ordered that if you're looking forward to john pertwee popping out of a, of a big box into your into your living room and onto your oh, at some point. i want to ask you guys a question okay so let's just go on this yes. um road down the road say they do the um the assistants or the companions yes. uh video whatever mm. at the end they meet the doctor which doctor would you like them all to meet there's my question there's my question to you Classic in this, or new? In this, in this day and age, I reckon it would be Tennant. No, no, no. But what would you like? Oh, what was I like? Yeah, what would you? Who? What oh, doctor? Well, if, if, the, if the TARDIS appeared and, oh. and the door opened, who? what doctor do you like to see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Tom, I'd agree. It would have to be Tom. 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 Oh, Tom, Tom. What well, about well, you, Simon? Well, you, Tom? Yeah. No, no, no I, I would want John, John Pertwee, personally. Oh, but, I was, um, I was assuming yeah. we were going for people that are still alive. Um, if we're going, no, for, no, if we're going for fantasy, fantasy. Well, in that case, no, it's yeah. Billy Hartnell. Billy Hartnell, in that case. Oh, Billy Hartnell. But as I said, they can do it now. You know, with uh, with uh, you know all these technology, they can do. But what I'm saying, gee, he just steps out the TARDIS, and that's where it ends. You know what I mean? That, what yeah. do you like? Yeah. The, the, yeah. Door, yeah. the door, the door, just, yeah. the door just opens. But no, I would have. <laughs> it. Here's my answer. I would have it so the door would open. Yeah. The door would. The door would open. Outwards and outward walk the Peter Cushing doctor. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, that would be awesome. And then the credits would kick in. Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. Get the all the companions would be like, Who are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'd yeah. have it so it'd be Tom, and Tom would come out, look at them all, and go, Jesus Christ, and get back in and go. <laughs> <laughs> in my multiverse ver version ending of that, what would happen? That would be the equivalent of the Mandalorian, the Mandalorian scene. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. You haven't seen it. Have no, you watched it? Boy, I haven't okay. seen it yet. Okay. But it would be, if you know where, if you know what I'm talking about, you'll know what I mean. But that would be, that would be, that'd be good. awesome. It doesn't matter if it's Tom or John um or i mean you know david's easy to get because he's still alive i guess um mm. or matt whatever but yeah tom would be awesome because they they the only time we've seen tom is in the 50th you know we need to see him mm. in his prime again it'd be awesome wouldn't it absolutely yeah. awesome we we well, do we do it'd be funny the old, too he's the oldest doctor now at this moment in time he's the governor as far as yeah, I'm he, is. Yeah, yeah, he, is. Yeah. he is i mean disaster area here is in the chat and he, he's got this quick it's uh, comment depends on which companions they use does it now well, the living no, it ones. doesn't. <laughs> yeah, the living ones. The, the living ones. But yeah. Carol and Ford onwards, we'd have to go through them all, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. But it'd be it'd be really it'd be really really cool if that could actually if the BBC could actually do that. It'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely awesome. Yeah. I, I agree. Just bring out every single companion that you can get your hands on. That's still alive. Yeah. Bring back. Uh, but as I say, we know they watch occasionally. So if it actually happens, but also <laughs> if you want if you want the audience to watch it. You have a vote. Put it on Twitter or wherever. I love vote that. for the doctor that comes at the ending. That's what they should do. Just get people. Oh get God! The fans to that vote was tried it. once before in 1993, and it was a hell of a mess. Let's not go down that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> we have somebody from bloody Are You Being Served or Are you EastEnders turning up going, oh, where am I? <laughs> well, you know, being really, yeah, a CGI oh, doctor. As long as they awesome. don't render them in CGI, that's what Alex, Alex, here, Alex yeah. Dora. He's well, got you a know, point I mean, there. all we want. I agree. Is, all he wants is just a small just, bit, you know, like he just he opens the door and there he is and then it cuts to black. You know, you don't want to interact or anything like that. I'm sure yeah. they could do it good just for that one shot. I, you know? I, I do think it's a great idea. I think it's a twist on the anniversary stories and it's never been done before. And we do, yeah. thank goodness, still have some of the actors in, uh, around that have been involved over all these years. I mean, you know, yeah. you, you know, it, it would be very Which interesting. Do, and it could be a disaster, be couldn't it? Late. I could be, I, it could be a massive disaster that only the companions recognise and come together yeah, to try and yeah. solve because they're on Earth together. Mm, could work. Yeah. I mean, also, I mean, always, I always hark back to um, 
the Sarah Jane adventures when yeah. Katie Manning's together with her and the way they talk and stuff like that. And do you know what I mean? So if you have other companions in there, it'd be interesting to to see um, how they react with one another. And, and, and obviously they all know their doctor, but she won't know his doctor. Do you know what I mean? And it'd be, it's an interesting dynamic there. You know, that could be a really 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 entertaining little video or but it's also something. more from a character point of view it's a great way to develop a lot of the the assistants that didn't yeah. get the development that they needed because yeah imagine anika wills with polly you know mm -hmm. polly would now be you know way wherever polly would be and you know we know you know it'd be a great way for them to do stuff without the this, doctor's interference just like liz yeah. has had the chance to do with yeah. sarah jane you know and, and this is one of the things that Russell T Davies, I think, always did very well, which is he used to drop in those little comments about what some of the other, what the, some of the companions are up to. Yeah. And he came up with really imaginative stuff as to what they were doing now. So I think it would be great to, to put them in. And again, like I've just said, you know, before time runs out, guys, let's let's do this. They wasted an opportunity at the 50th. Please, please don't waste another opportunity yeah. before it's too late. Is that. it? Uh, talking about, pr talking about uh, pretty pictures, Alex, <laughs> what we've got you here, your wonderful art cards, your Blackpool exhibition art cards, mm. tying in tying into your book, aren't, aren't they, with John Collier? Do you want to tell us about those again before we go? Yes, I'm still flogging them on eBay. Um, <laughs> limited <laughs> edition. They're the ah. ones. Um, come in a shiny packet with oh, 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 let's get individual number. Up. Yes. Um, yeah, no, I'd had a break from uh... high quality art cards here. Prints of Alex's fabulous illustrations from that amazingly popular ebook, the biggest ebook I think in history. The biggest ebook in history. It's official because we've <laughs> really? just told you it is. It, it, oh, it great. is. That's yeah, great. It is. Nobody's going to ah, argue. It is. <laughs> fabulous. That's great. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, yes, yeah, so people can find those on eBay, can't they? If you let us have the link, we'll drop it in the comments section in the description sorry yes. and people can go direct yeah and get them because obviously it is valentine's day coming up so that's the ideal gift for <laughs> for your loved one for your so, loved one, <laughs> I think. yeah darling here i got you some yeah. darlic cards yeah, yeah. Why, why not? <laughs> any, or any oh, birthday yeah. or any birthday you may have coming up coming up coming up yeah coming up about now over on the rabbi from another planet feel a bit kenny i'll be kicking off with more doctor who talk heaven knows which rumors because the rabbi has famously created rumors albeit accidentally himself head over to his <laughs> channel after we've logged off of course you can catch up with whatever he's saying later on yeah. head over to his yeah. channel and see what the rabbi is talking about you can you can bet it'll be a lot of fun christian you're up a little bit later on as well four or five hours time legend of the traveling times what are you talking about this week over, yeah over i see again. a lot of people are going i'm going to dinner now i'm just like i'm going to lunch now <laughs> 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 uh, gotta get used to that there. uh tonight we're going back into our big finish and uh i we we've been doing a couple things that, on, on the traveling tardis that we kind of skipped out on the first we did on the first year and then didn't go back to one of the things we wanted okay. to go back to was reviewing big finish i think we did like one or two and then we just stopped so the next episode, I just asked the gang, I said, which episode do you want to do? And Melanie shouts out, Sword of Orion. So we're going oh, to be Oh, I know that. Well, Sword that's a Paul McGowan one, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. And it's a er, uh, Charlie Early season. So I'm just, uh, I was like, okay, I guess we're doing uh, that one. So India Fisher. She Lovely. liked me. Uh, yeah. Those really big finish stories so are that... brilliant. I mean, the big finish really brought the show back to life during the sort of late wilderness years. And... <laughs> yeah, that did. We thought well, that it was did, yeah. the future. Children. But and it was different at the time earlier. I think, Never you know, grow gone on I really long did, now. Yeah. So that so that's tonight on well tonight. For us, it's tonight. For you, it's about the middle of the day on the Legend of the Traveling Tardis. Go and go and check that out. And yeah, PD Richie's off to off to see the rabbi. Tell Ooh. the rabbi I bloody plugged him, won't you? Send, <laughs> send, our, send our love. Send Metaphorically, our love to the please. <laughs> send our love to the rabbi. Loving rabbis all over the place. <laughs> what have you got yeah. coming up later on this weekend? Because you like to go on different channels, don't you? And talk various movies. Yeah, and TV uh, yeah. Sometimes I'm on uh, Culture Casino's channel. I really like him. He he gives out some good stuff as well. And um, always on Dan's channel. I can't escape. I'm always there. Yeah. <laughs> new show starting soon, everybody. <laughs> Brand new show starting soon on the Facebook. Look yeah. out for that. More more talk about that in a few days' time. <laughs> Look at he, Simon. He be there. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> everybody has to tune in next week because we want to see Simon with that blue hair. With that blue hair. Yeah. 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 
just might not be brave enough. <laughs> just get it done. You've said yeah. you're going to do it now. The viewers expect it. Yes. Let me be brave. The people. Let me be brave. The people. Blue. The people have. Blue. Oh, the people is... have spoken. Blue Simon hashtag hashtag blue lunatic. <laughs> blue lunatic. Blue this lunatic. What, like that lunatic. What the people. What the people want. Got one last picture to show you guys. This is a, a lovely picture taken in 19, 1968. Uh, not by me. This was taken by uh, I believe it, pro probably the parent of Sabrina Dare Bledsoe. Oh, she's, wow. she's close to this delightful picture from what's probably a seaside town i think yeah and that's yeah. obviously one of those daleks that you can put you could put a coin in couldn't you and, and two yeah. pence go two up pence, and mate. down i've yeah. never i've i don't remember ever seeing these obviously oh, I do. Oh, really? I've got a photograph oh. in one of those yeah yeah oh, have, have you really oh well so could you see out of them what we're looking at is a dalek no, which would have been the the dalek would have, so the dalek would have been around four four foot four and a half foot tall at the most no, they were yeah. quite big. Uh, they were about five, five and a half, six yeah, foot. They were, they were bigger than a crocodile. About five foot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. These yeah, things in Blackpool on the pier. Fiberglass. It yeah. was a, a, a flat roof. You couldn't see into the dome. It was all very disappointing, but it, it sort of had that musty. Yeah, uh, fiberglass stroke mud smell that you've got yeah. inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't remember, um, did, did they turn or something like that? I can't remember if it did. Yeah, it, it sort of. It jerked around a bit. That's right. And it, it did do it, a few reasons. It was an anticlimax. So oh, for, for a kid, it wasn't an anticlimax. I remember coming out of the Blackpool exhibition on numerous occasions and running across the road yeah. to the pier to get in one. Red, as I recall, they were red <laughs> yeah. and, what, and yellow. What was your what was your question there, Simon, about the noise? No, I was saying to Alex, can you remember? Did they did they do did they do any phrases? Did they speak at all? Can you remember? I'm sure they did. I was probably about five at the time, so I don't remember. I you think... know, the lights flashed, you could move all the guns. Um, yes. I think it probably just made space sounds and laser noises. It so didn't have Briggs' get... voice. Jesus. I'm sure it had. I'm sure it said exterminate, exterminate. Surely it no, must no, have. No. I'm going to get remember. chastised for this. Is this <laughs> early Jodie Whittaker? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs>